From your local election headquarters, this is a special edition of News 8. Good evening, everyone. We've got a lot to get to tonight with this midterm election. Polls closed a couple hours ago, and elections officials have been busy processing the ballots and counting those votes. A lot of races in our area have been seeing technical delays, though they're slowly coming in. We'll have more on that in just a moment, but first. Right. With that in mind, we're going to go right to the statewide race that you all have been paying attention to. That's the race for New York governor. Look at the numbers. 48% of the vote in. Kathy Hochul with 49%. She's the Democrat incumbent. Lee Zeldin, Congressman Zeldin, the Republican, with 41%. We do not see anybody calling this race at this point. Again, only 48% of the vote in. That number could and likely will tighten. We will continue to follow that as the evening progresses. Now, the numbers have been slow to come in, as I mentioned, from the Monroe County Board of Elections. Officials reported some technical issues earlier in the night as we continued to look for the results. And just before 11, we got word that those issues were still existing, but they were able to essentially resort to paper. And that's what they have done in this. So we do have some limited results for you. Candidates for the race for 25th Congressional District seat are among those anxiously awaiting to to see what voters have decided. In that race, Democrat incumbent Joe Morelli is defending his seat against the former Rochester Police Chief LaRon Singletary. We're going to take a look at the numbers that we have so far. Again, we want to stress that these are far from complete. You see there that 2% of the numbers are in. That was earlier from Orleans County. The 25th District represents part of Orleans County. You see 50% is being garnered by Laron Singletary there and then 50% with Joseph Morelli. Of course, it will be a long night for these two candidates. Christian Garzone joins us live from the GOP headquarters with the latest there. Christian. Yeah, again, no one's really sure where these numbers sort of trickling in. It's still too close to call. Uh, the energy here is very high. Uh, the Rocky theme song was played earlier, being tested out over the speakers. I'm assuming that's for a kind of victory lap. Uh, should LeRon Singletary win? Uh, one little kid had no idea what the Rocky theme song was. It kind of broke my heart there for a second. All the major candidates are here. James Van Brederode, Marcus C. Williams, Joe Shenley, of course, LeRon Singletary. It's cautious optimism in place right now uh, for number they feel will be really close either way and those close numbers they feel win or lose could really show the shift in priorities for voters in areas some areas that are considered um, deep blue usually the major issues everyone's talking about here including the Ron Singletary uh, is crime inflation gas prices, the economy, uh, the kitchen table issues they feel Democrats have really uh, sort of dropped the ball on the past couple years. Singletary feels he's the best person suited to defeat Joe Morelli because of a grassroots movement he started. Here he is earlier in Henrietta casting his vote this morning. We have uh, created a grassroots organization. Uh, many volunteers have supported us. We have had people who have never donated to a political campaign. We've had people who have never knocked on a door, who have never placed a yard sign in their yard or made phone calls for a political campaign. So I think we created a grassroots effort. And this evening, as Frank Stallone said in a famous song, is far from over. Live in Greece, Christian Garzone, News 8. Adam Teresa, right back to you in the studio. And Christian, you mentioned that they're cautiously optimistic, which we can understand with the glitches and some of the slow reporting that's coming in. Thank you for that report, Adam. All right, Teresa, thank you so much. And I can't stress enough, I've covered around two dozen races in Monroe County over the years. It is highly abnormal not to have some decent, some solid numbers in at this point. So both political parties standing by very anxious. With that, we're going to go over to Natalie Kuchko. She's at the Democratic headquarters at the Hyatt in downtown Rochester. Natalie, what's the atmosphere like there? Yeah, Adam, I can tell you in the last half hour, this room is buzzing. This has been interesting to say the least. It's been a night of, uh, you know, over an hour of just refreshing, refreshing the county's website until ultimately we were informed that we had to revert to a PDF document where the results have been trickling in. Now, we're closely watching the races for the congressional district as well as Senate, and both of those, while results are not final, seem to be very close. Now, we have not seen 
Congressman Joe Morelli yet or incumbent uh, Jeremy Cooney running for state Senate once again. We expect to see them soon. Earlier today, we caught up with Morelli, who was uh, out canvassing in the final hours of this election day. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. There's a lot of people still as I go to door who really want to vote on Tuesday election day, which, uh, you know, obviously is, uh, is their choice to do. But we just want to encourage to make sure every single person gets out, that they express uh, what they feel about uh, this community, about the country. Uh, and then uh, we sit back and uh, let them have their say, which is the way we do it. And Congressman Morelli, they're hoping to embark on his third term in the 25th Congressional District. Again, the energy has just pumped up here as we are awaiting and following uh, that, that PDF document for the updated results. With that, we are live in Rochester at Democratic Headquarters. Natalie Kuchko, News 8. All right, you can hear the nerves humming there, Natalie. Thank you. So again, we're waiting. For the Monroe County Board of Elections here to catch up so we can bring the most up-to-date and the most complete look at the 25th race along with a number of others in our area. Teresa. All right, taking a look now at some of the other races we've been keeping an eye on tonight, starting with the race for New York's 56th State Senate District. Democrat incumbent Salma Brook is facing off against Republican Lynn Morrell. If we have those numbers, we can show those numbers at this time. Here we are. We've got the numbers, and again, these numbers are based off of the PDF that the Monroe Board of Elections Office has been sending us. So in this race, you see 54% of the vote is for Samra Brook. Her challenger, her Republican challenger, Lynn Morrell, has captured 46 percent of the vote. We do not have a total of the votes in yet because as we stated before, those votes are coming in by PDF and we don't have a clear understanding yet as to the totals, a total of votes that have been counted. All right, moving on to the 56th district where you have Congress, current Democrat Congressman Jeremy Cooney defending his seat against his Republican challenger, James Van Bretter, Van, Van Bretter Road. Excuse me. The Republican there has 48% of the vote. Jeremy, Jeremy Cooney, the incumbent, the Democrat, has 52% of the vote. Adam. All right, very close race for that Senate race in the 56th district. Now, in the race to represent New York State in the U.S. Senate, Democrat incumbent and the majority leader, the current majority leader in in the U.S. Senate, Chuck Schumer has won. He has been declared the winner in this race against his Republican challenger, Joe Pinion, 53% of the vote in. Schumer, a couple of hours ago, actually got up on stage and gave a victory speech. Here's some of what he had to say. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise to all of you here tonight and all 20 million New Yorkers whom it's my honor to represent, I will keep fighting, I will keep this fight up for as long as it takes to win. Onward to victory, Democrats. So there you have it, Schumer headed back to Washington for another six years. And the question at the national level all season has been this, who will control Congress? And at this hour, we still don't know. Republicans were favored to retake the U.S. House, but whether that's going to happen remains unclear. Meanwhile, the U.S. Senate still looks to be a toss-up as we wait for more results from places like Pennsylvania and Georgia. All right, Adam, in the race for New York State Attorney General, the incumbent Letitia James, a Democrat, is up against Republican Michael Henry. The numbers there show that Letitia James has captured 57% of the vote, her challenger 43% of the vote. James spoke tonight, within the last hour, actually, thanking her supporters. With tonight's victory, we sent a message that New York is ready to meet whatever challenges lie ahead, Mama Dukes. We sent a message, a shot across the bow, to the most powerful companies and people who believe that they're above the law, that they are not, and that this Attorney General will hold them accountable. All right, back home here, Rochester City Court judge. Three candidates vying for three seats. That means Latoya Lee, a current judge, will remain in her spot. The other candidates on the ballot, Van White and Jacqueline Grip, will fill out those other positions. 
All right, we're going to turn things over to take a look at the voter turnout around our area today. It has been a long day since the polls opened at 6 this morning and closed two hours ago at 9. John Kutchko joins us in the studio now with a look at how things have shaped up today. John. Well, Teresa, like you guys, I'm limited with numbers. All I can tell you is this. Uh, folks out there know I get up early. I go around the city. I go around the county. I go all over the place. And I saw people out at polling sites this morning, this afternoon, and into this evening. One thing we can all agree on is that this election year has galvanized the effort to go out and cast your vote. And so people have done that. As of 7.30 p.m., which was the last update we had from the Board of Elections regarding voter turnout, 39% voter turnout in Monroe County. That's well over 190,000 people. Again, that's of 7.30 p.m. 27% in the city of Rochester. That's over 28,000 people there. And a very impressive 43% in other towns and suburbs within Monroe County. And again, this was as of 7.30. Four years ago, the last midterm election, that percentage overall for the county was at 68%. So the way this was trending, with all the people going out there, especially this evening, I saw so many people out and about going to polling sites tonight, and I'm talking about 6, 7 o'clock range, that those numbers were going to jump exponentially and surpass in all likelihood the 68% in Monroe County that we saw four years ago. So while many people out there are divided on their political, where they're on which side of the fence, one thing we can all agree on, Americans in this area went out and voted in big numbers, and that indeed is impressive. Yes, a lot of people were motivated this midterm election. Thank you, John. We're expecting updated voter turnout numbers from the Board of Election, though it appears, as we've been saying, those numbers have been delayed or slowly coming in. Um, untraditional, to say the least. We're going to go live to the Monroe County Board of Elections, where our reporter, Eriketa Cost, is live with the latest. Eriketa, what can you tell us? Good evening, Teresa. And we just came from the Republican headquarters where there was a lot of chatter and anticipation for those results, a lot of confusion on where they were. And as you mentioned, not traditionally um, late like this. And we did hear talks that there was an issue in the system and the Board of Elections did confirm on their website they are experiencing some issues with the system. The statement on their website reads, the Board of Elections is experiencing delays with uploading election returns to the election night reporting system. We recognize that our voters and candidates are eager to see the election results and are working diligently to improve the speed of reporting. In addition to direct reporting, we have the capacity to produce PDF documents of results as they are tabulated and will begin to release those the PDF reports will be uploaded frequently throughout the night um, so we're hearing that both Board of Elections commissioners are inside working to solve these issues right now and we did a bump into Singletary's attorney outside who says they are looking into the integrity of the elections we'll have more coverage from both the Democrat and Republican Party of course here on News 8 in Rochester Erica Cost News 8.